All right, folks, welcome to Detroit. Well, I guess we're not technically in Detroit. We're in Birmingham. The game takes place in at Auburn Hills near Pontiac. So call it what you want. It better be called a win tonight after a thoroughly disappointing performance yesterday. And, and you know, I don't think it was I don't think it was because the team wasn't prepared. Uh, you know, Chicago put in a better effort. I just think the team, Eric, tried to do too much once they got down, tried to do too much individually, and in the end, I think that's what hurt them. Well, and the, the big thing that, to me, plagued the team yesterday, and uh, maybe, you know, master of the obvious here, defensively. And, and that's the problem that's kind of plagued this team for at least two-thirds, if not three-quarters of the year, uh, minus that 25-30 uh, game stretch in the middle of the season. And it's definitely plagued them over the last week or so. I said that to you during the broadcast, hey, that was the Cavs. Okay, that was the Celtics. Okay, that was the Hawks. Well, that was the Bulls. Yeah. And that was one of the worst offenses in the uh, league. One of the worst efficiency ratings, bottom five. And Toronto made them look like the Showtime Lakers at times. And uh, it was just a, a, a bad performance overall. And to me, the key was as, as bad as the third quarter was, as bad as the second half was overall, it was that late stretch in the second quarter. Toronto had it down to three at 49-46, gave up a 9-2 run to close out the half, down 10 at the half, gave up 58 points, and it was done. Yeah. And then they come out and shoot 6 of 25 in the third quarter. That was it right there. And Jonesy, I, I, you said disappointing, no doubt. Disappointing, frustrating, a, a huge letdown with so much in their favor. So much I mean, on the line, too. When yeah. we, when we yeah. talk about the long season, right, this is what you play for, that long season to get yourselves in a position where if you need a game, uh, a, quote, must-win kind of game, you want your home floor, you want that home court advantage. And the Raptors basically threw it away uh, with yesterday's game. Well, i got to tell you, Chicago looked like – the team that battled Boston last year in the playoffs. They they were focused. Uh, Derrick Rose was really, really tough. He was their best player, had 22 field goal attempts, got to the basket, made enough jumpers to keep Toronto honest. And uh, Joe Kim Noah, say what you want about maybe his over-exuberance at times and you know his the fact that the, the kid's a little off or people say he's a little bit wacky. He played hard and he did a terrific job, tied a career high in assists, uh, passed the ball well, rebounded the ball well, uh, scored enough, was a presence on the inside, and Chicago looked like a team that maybe had been, well, let's say a little better seasoned based on what happened last year in the playoffs in that epic seven-game series against the Boston Celtics. And that's why making the playoffs is always better than yep. missing the playoffs. Lou L. Dang told us that on our post-game show last night as well, the experience. So if you think of this young Raptors team with guys like DeMar DeRozan and Sonny Weems, and the list goes on, guys getting into the postseason. Heck, Jared Jack hasn't tasted the postseason before. Get that experience, because as somebody mentioned to us on Twitter last night, I thought it was a great point. Yes. One team yesterday looked like they had been to war and knew what it takes or what it took to win a war. One team looked like they've never been to war or been to a battle and didn't know how to win a war or win that battle. And it's obvious which was the one of the two teams that I'm discussing. The thing for the Raptors, though, to keep in mind, Jonesy, and this, I said this on the broadcast it's yesterday. It's not dead yet. This not is, over yet. This isn't a pom-pom statement. This yeah. is pu purely fact. It's not dead. It could have been so close to dead for Chicago had Toronto won. But with Chicago winning, the door is still very much open. If Chicago goes 2-0, and the Raptors are done. If Chicago goes 1-1, one and one, if the Raptors go 2-0, and they're in. If Chicago goes 0-2, oh the Raptors could still lose one, go one and one, and they're in. So there's three scenarios right there that could still put Toronto into the postseason picture. And the Raptors, in spite of the fact that Boston might rest guys and Charlotte might rest guys, Toronto still, to me, has the more favorable schedule when you think of the opponents. Well, yeah, and, and Eric made a good point about resting people. You know, if you're a Raptor fan, you need some other things that you would hope fall into place as well. Uh, you, you need Milwaukee to beat Atlanta because if Atlanta beats Milwaukee tonight, they clinch that seed ahead of Boston. Now Boston figures, well, we can't catch Atlanta. Maybe they rest guys in Chicago, and that sets it up for a Bulls win. That being said, look, you have it in front of you still. If you're Toronto, you've got to go out and win games. Entering through the back door is fine, but at some point you've got to win a game to at least get your foot into the back door. All right, so it's time for lunch for us, as always. Might be our last vlog of the season right here, right now. We'll see. Depends if the postseason is coming or not. And tonight we can be heard on uh, AM 1150 CKOC, the Blue Jays home opener on the Fan 590. Rogers' own team, Rogers' own station, contractual obligations, that's understandable. So 1150 AM.
p.m. AM 11:50 CKOC. That's tonight, not on the Fan 590. If you want to hear the Jays? Tune into the Fan. You want to hear us and the Raptors, Pistons, Raptors. 7:30 AM 11:50. 7:30 start, folks. Again, we'll talk to you then.